10 tips and tricks with the K40 laser. Today I will show you techniques that I use every time I work with this machine. If you are new to the world of the K40 laser, this might be very helpful to you. If you know everything about the machine already, uh, maybe even then some of the tips and tricks may be inspiring to you too. Of course, um, there are plenty more techniques, workflows, uh, and uh, some of the tricks are already showed in uh, the one or other video over the past years, but I thought I should bring them all together in this video. So, um, or at least some of them. So um, grab a beer and uh, enjoy. Oh, and um, I am sure you have plenty more tricks in your pockets that I don't know about. So um, it would be awesome to leave those ideas down uh, in the comments for maybe a follow-up video. Now let's get started. Starting with an annoying bug you may encounter when you use Coral Draw or Coral Laser. This software besides Laser Draw and K40 Whisperer came with the machine. Now even Coral Draw 12 is quite outdated as they moved on to way more sophisticated versions nowadays. It for what I tested is the last version that is compatible with the K40 plugin I have. Many people nowadays use Illustrator and then export it to K40 Whisperer. Maybe there is a direct plugin I don't know of, but I stick with Coral Draw as I use this software for years. However, there is an annoying bug, or let's call it a function, that uh, made me throw away a lot of wood and acrylics. The plugin grabs everything on the working area that is black and uh, make the laser rather cut it out or engrave it depending on which mode you choose over here. So let's say I have this layout from a recent Geiger counter project where I want to engrave the sign and um, then cut the lines. I could now go ahead and engrave the entire thing but this will take about 15 minutes and I don't need the lines to be engraved anyways as I need to cut them later. So what I could do, well the most logic thing is to remove everything from the design that needs to be cut and just engrave the actual logo. But here is the problem. You can see the layout here ready to be engraved. When I go ahead and remove a line that defines the outer edge, like the cutting outline of this design, this happens. Well, yes, the plugin shifts and adjusts the position of the logo in order to save space on your cutting medium. This seems to be obvious in this case, but um, you encounter projects where, for example, you only remove a little screw hole and the logo just shifts a couple of mils without you even noticing it. This shift of course results in misalignment on your finished piece and often causes it to go in the trash. Now to avoid this from happening, here is a simple trick. Simply go ahead and draw four tiny little squares that um, together surpass the overall size of your layout. That way you can delete things without any shifting at all. Some say you could even make them translucent or a, a different color that the laser does not see, but I had issues with that in the past, so I simply leave them black. Tip number two and one of my recent favorite techniques is to combine laser cut parts with 3D printed bodies. Um, so as for example, this tiny smoke machine or even um, this bigger smoke machine or even this bigger smoke machine or um, this Geiger counter, as I mentioned. They all have a laser cut and engraved top plate. Now, as I am a noob in 3D modeling, I use Tinkercad, what is a super simple but very versatile online program, mostly designed for children and me, um, that makes designing pretty simple and fast. Here, for example, is the Atos fog machine design. In order to make the laser cut lit, I simply use the plane I use to punch the hole. In this example, I also want a lip that supports the acrylic plate later on. So I go ahead and duplicate the lid, then make the duplicate around 4mm smaller, what leaves me with a 2mm lip on both sides. I align everything before defining the height, what is defined by the thickness of my material. In my case, my acrylic sheets are 3mm thick, so the lip plane sinks in 3mm into the housing. The cutout plane of course goes through all the way. Before I compile this into a single object, I go ahead and copy the lip plane. Then compile it and this is how I made a support lip for the top cover plate. Now I can paste the lip plate and uh, add some basic shape related things that are more complicated to do in Coral Draw, like uh, these vent holes. I go ahead compiling it and export it as an SVG file. 
Cobalt Draw 12 is picky when it comes to importing other CAD file formats, but um, SVG seems to be working perfectly and uh, I can simply import it in order to cut and engrave it. Of course, here I can add text or labels, holes and everything else needed. The finished top plate fits perfectly, but this mostly works for acrylics. As for wood, um, you would need to play around with the exact sizes due to the charring. Sometimes when the material I have is just a little too thick, like the 3mm acrylic glass I am usually using, I use a technique that I call edge milling. What I basically do is to remove a bit of thickness on the edges. To do this I need to remove some material by engraving it away. Herefore I use the same two plates I used in the previous example, but export both of them separately. When I now import them to Cobalt Draw, arrange them to the middle of the page, I can now fill in the bigger plane black and the smaller one white. This leaves me with the exact pattern I need to remove. A little tip is to make the smaller plane even a bit smaller in order to give it a little tolerance. With this technique I can now take away about 0.8mm per pass at the highest power setting on the laser at 200mm per second. Layer stacking is basically the same principle as 3D printing, but with the K40. The housing of my first ghost detector, for example, was made that way. I designed the layout by repeatedly using the same outline and then adding or removing things in order to fit this battery pack, for example. I made this using Cobalt Draw, but nowadays I would preferably do this kind of work in Thinkercad and um, then crudely slice it apart, um, export it to um, SVG and import it to Cobalt Draw. As it visualizes things in 3D, it is way simpler than doing this in my head. Simply keep in mind that the layer thickness is defined by the thickness of your working material. This is a quick tip, but um, it took me a while to find out. I'm not sure every laser does that, but um, when I go over the middle setting of my analog power indicator, uh, what in my case is 50 milliamps, the power of the laser beam actually decreases. My only explanation is that the laser tube gets overpowered, but uh, I am sure the exact reason you will find in the comments down below. Test it out yourself to see if it increases the output when you stick around 15 milliamps. If I use pre-cut parts like this PCB for example, I simply take the exact dimensions of the part, engrave the shape onto a piece of plywood and then align the part to the markings. Two important things to this method are of course to make sure that um, you don't move the plywood after it has been marked and uh, keep the focus points right as um, you rise up the working piece. My laser bed actually is 4mm lower than usual so I can always underlay my working material with some plywood. This by the way is also a nice indicator if the cut went through on acrylics as you see the laser lights glowing orange when it hits the underlying wood. The negative side of doing this is that the vaporized wood and resin now sticks to the acrylics and is quite sticky, but you can wash it off. This one is probably obvious, but uh, pretty cool and um, still needed to be mentioned. In order to make engravings and labels more visible and readable, I brush some paint on them before carefully wiping it off again. The paint inside the grooves will remain and um, it will look like a professional manufactured piece of equipment. I sometimes mix in glow-in-the-dark powder to make glowing labels or use multiple colors. This is a classic and probably the most discussed subject on my channel and Discord server. Rather you use spray paint, plasti dip spray or tape in order to label or etch metal, masking it with spray paint, engraving your design onto the piece is a good way to go. Spray paint, however, is the winner in my opinion. It does not shrink and can be easily removed with acetone later. I use this technique to mark metals and even to make my own PCBs. Even this might be more of a rare thing to do, but I successfully welded plastic foils with the K40 laser. Herefore, I removed the laser lens in the head before cutting my layout onto two sheets of plastic foil. A practical thing to have in Cobalt Draw and um, an option that is missing in this early version is the line length indicator. For some projects, as for example my Ghostbusters neon sign, I needed to know the exact length of a line. When I draw this circle for example, I can of course adjust the exact size. But sometimes I would need to know the exact distance the laser head needs to travel. In order to get this information, I need to install this little feller. It is called a macro. 
even if it is in Polish, it gives me the exact length of the actual line. You can see how to install this in my Ghostbusters Neon Sign video by clicking in the upper right hand corner of this video. Last but not least, a very nice little thing I just recently set up is a home cloud. If you use a different computer to design than um, the one that is hooked up to your K40, think about setting up a simple cloud server in your home. The only thing you need is an USB stick. Your internet router usually has an USB port. By hooking up the USB stick and enable the NAS NAS option, um, you will need to create a login and password in your router setup. You can now add this stick to all of your computers in your home using the stick as a cloud. This avoids me from copying the cut files to a stick over and over when I change things to the layout and may stay accessible from all my computers. Now that was it for my top 10 tips and tricks for the K40. I hope you enjoyed and please feel free to add your ideas to the comments. While you're there, please subscribe and press this little bell to get even notified when I upload the next video. Until then, see ya!